Hey, it's Lucy. Crazily enough, I've been doing this PhD thing for three years now, which means I'm about to enter my fourth and my final and my hardest year. Not sure how this happened. I'll make a video about the good bits so far, but for now I wanted to talk about where the PhD got so difficult for me, at least so far, so that anyone who's at an earlier stage or who's just starting out, you can see where and why it got so hard and maybe steer away from such problems or know you're not alone in them. It's the kind of thing I'd have liked to have heard back when I was trying to figure out what the world I'd got myself into, so here goes. First things first, the very first term. Not to be off-putting to people who are just about to start, but in chronological order, certainly one of the scariest parts of my PhD was just starting out. I'm on a new type of PhD program called the Doctoral Training Partnership, which gets me a PhD like any other, but has an additional six months of training tacked on at the start, so we got to learn things like advanced maths and coding. I started out really excited to throw myself into all this stuff, but I quickly realised the advanced maths was too advanced and the coding I just couldn't get my head around at all. And I started to really panic. I started to think, what if I need to know this stuff? What if I just can't do it? What if they realised it was a mistake letting me on this course? Looking back, I now realise I had an intense case of imposter syndrome that really only started to lessen once I started my research and realised, oh hey, I can do this, I don't actually need to know any one thing, but at the time, I was seized with fear at anything new, in case I failed. The next pretty scary bit for me came six months in, in spring of first year. Six months into my PhD, and I had an empty desk, I was settled in, I was attending lab meetings, but I didn't really know what I was doing. At all. I knew what my project was, but I was at an absolute loss how to begin. I was too scared to ask for help, I was too scared to admit I didn't know something, because what if I was supposed to know it, and as the weeks went by and all I'd done was read paper after paper, I started to think I was doing something seriously wrong. Again, with the joys of hindsight, I now know this is completely normal. Certainly a lot of people I've spoken to agree that they didn't get very much done during this time, and really, arming yourself with the knowledge of your research area and what the outstanding questions are is just what you need to get started. So also very normal and very common if you find yourself in this position. The third really tough time during my PhD was entirely preventable and entirely my own fault, and if you find yourself in this same position, then you're as much of an idiot as I was. This came from the end of second year right through to halfway through my third, and the problem was I bit off more than I could chew. Why, why, why? I was writing up my master's research as a paper, I was supervising undergraduates for a Mars simulation project, I was running this channel, I was supervising A-level students, I had conferences that backed onto workshops that backed onto summer schools, I was sinking two or three hours a day into this additional side project I'll talk about later, I had about six flights in the whole year, and somewhere in there I was supposed to be doing a PhD. I did all of these stupid things for a very unstupid reason, and that's that I was afraid of missing any opportunity. And a lot of exciting opportunities do come your way during a PhD. But you've got to be selective. You can't lose sight of why you're here, and least of all, you can't let it affect your PhD. Slowly the projects wound down, and after that it was just a case of declining any new ones and throwing myself into the ones that remained. And I was going to need that focus for what was about to come. Spring of third year. Teaching myself thermodynamics. I think this was the hardest academic part of my PhD so far. I'd written my first paper, a big hefty geochemical thing on my experiments, uh, but the story was not going to be complete without a discussion of what was going on on the thermodynamic level. If I wanted to understand the results of my experiments, if I wanted to become a better scientist and produce better research, I had to get my head around something that scared me even more than coding did. Those old fears from 2016 came right back. What if I can't do this? What if this is the end of the road for me? What if they ask me this at my Viva and I just can't tell them? But I kept at it, until after maybe a month I came up with a single equation. Literally, a couple of lines in the paper, and I'd done it. The final and most recent difficult time I'd like to talk about was summer of third year, or last month, and it was one of the most difficult times of my PhD. I've mentioned a side project, something I was sinking two or three hours a day into, something that's been going on for the last year, and last month it ended. I finished it. And as proud as I was, and as pleased as I was, those two or three hours a day of purpose just evaporated. A good way to imagine it, I suppose, is that we're a ship, and doing a PhD we're quite heavily laden and low in the water, but all the weight's on one side, so we rock about. Though a lot of work weighing me further into the water, this other project was like ballast on a ship, and it kept me stable. And then when that 
disappeared and it was just me and my PhD again, I'd lost my counterbalance. With nothing else to focus on, I started worrying and obsessing over my PhD in a way I hadn't done all year. Worrying about my lack of papers, worrying, am I employable? Worrying, have I done enough? And I was miserable. I would really recommend having a major side project during your PhD as this counterbalance to stop this from happening. It is more work, but what I found was having something else occupy your time outside your PhD doesn't hinder it. It actually helps it by keeping it from monopolizing your life. Okay, this video got a lot longer than I wanted it to, but there you have it. There are the five hardest times of my PhD so far, with the promise of a take two in a year's time that will probably consist solely of what the next year will bring. I'm curious to know how my hardest times compare to everyone else's, so if you are doing or have done a PhD and don't mind sharing, then please do tell me in the comments. And I hope you found this video helpful. And sorry for being deliberately cryptic about this side project, all will be revealed in my next video. Thanks for watching! My name is Lucy Kizik, I am a third year PhD student at the University of Oxford, and take care!